I have a shocking revelation for you. Ooh. Did you know that there was a conspiracy? Over 135, 140 some odd years ago, there was a conspiracy, at which I would call the Great Bible Conspiracy. Mostly by two men, Westcott and Hort, who were also allied with some nobles as Whitefoot and a couple others. Let me read it to you here. Uh, yet again, another discovery I made in Sam Gibbs' book, The Understandable History of the Bible. Sam C. Gip, THD. Let me read it to you here. On page 260, with the heading called, The Trap is Set. It said, having had doubts about the reliability of the authorized version firmly planted in their brains, in seminary and led by progressives, some of which were doubtless the Jesuits in disguise that we have previously mentioned, in 1870, in the convocation of the Church of England, Commission a revision of the authorized version. A gleam of hope shone in the eyes of every in the eye of every Roman Catholic in England. Matter of fact, the Act of Supremacy was uh, established in 18, 1534. They got their foot back in the door in 15, 1850. Over 236 years after they were pretty much thrown out since Henry, uh, Henry VIII threw him out but anyway let's see here let's see what it says here uh, every I have, um, I have every Roman Catholic uh, in England and in on, and on the continent an eager anticipation filled every Jesuit inspired Protestant scholar in England although it was meant to correct a few supposed errors in the authorized version, the textual critics of the day assured themselves that they would never again have to submit to the divine authority of the universal text or the um, you know, received text, Texas Receptus, um, majority text, same thing. Secret plans were made to clandestinely take over the revision committee to that the authorized version, so that the authorized version could be disposed of once and for all. Did they succeed? Um, well, let me just show you here. Did they succeed? No. We still got it. So that tells you their work was useless. In November 1870, Westcott testified of such a spirit in a letter to Dr. Benson, and a few minutes I go to with Light, I go with Lightfoot to Westminster. More will come of these meetings, I think, than is simply a revised version. The convocation had instructed the revision committee to review the English Bible and to make as few changes as possible. Really, if they're going to make a few changes, why don't you just mess with it? I wonder. They were, okay, they were instructed not to deal with the underlying Greek text of the authorized version. They were instructed to do as follows. To introduce as few alterations as possible into the text of the King James Bible. And to limit the expression of any, any alterations to the language of the authorized version. Westcott and Hort had other plans. They wanted to see an overthrow of the Texas Receptus entirely and to replace it with a variant of the local text of Egypt. They had edited the corrupt Vatican in Sinaiticus 
and Sinaitic manuscripts of the local text and had produced their own Greek text. Why, those underhanded, wily little rascals. Wisely, they had never published it. Thus, its existence was unknown to the world. Westcott and Hort did not have to worry about the investigative eyes of their contemporary scholars, such as Dean John Bergen. I love his books. Had their Greek texts been made public prior to the revision, it would have been exposed as corrupt and unfit for the translation in English. Doctors Westcott and Hort were definitely wise as serpents, but unfortunately they were equally as harmful. Scholarly, scholarly deceit. Since the committee had been instructed not to deal with the matters of the Greek text, and since the Westcott and Hort text had not been published, it was necessary for the two Cambridge Catholics to get it into the hands and hearts of the revision committee in some manner, some manner that would not cause alarm. Therefore, they submitted it little by little to the committee. Even this was done in secret, so that those who were faithful to the true text of scripture would not be aware until too late. In order to establish their own Greek text as authoritative, they met together in secret and first planned a strategy prior to the first meeting of the committee. Their old friend, Bishop Whitefoot, was even there to help, as Westcott notes in a letter to Hort dated May 1870. Your note came with one from Elliot Ellicott this morning, though I think the convocation is not competent to initiate such a measure, yet I feel that as we three are together, it would be wrong not to make the best of it, as Lightfoot says. There is some hope that the alternative readings might find a place in the margin. The next month he wrote to Lightfoot himself, ought we not to have a conference before the first meeting? For revision, there are many points on which it is important that we should be agreed. Having predetermined with which way the committee should go, they, they, they then secretly submitted their text to its members. Then they said, then they stayed closer, cl excuse me, then they stayed close by their sides to see to it that their scheme was carried out as Dr. Wilkinson informs us. What's the, uh, the New Greek Testament upon which Westcott and Hort had been working for 20 years was, portion by portion, secretly committed into the hand of the revision committee. The Greek text was strongly radical and revolutionary. The revisers followed the guidance of the two Cambridge editors, Westcott and Hort who were constantly at their elbow, and whose radical Greek New Testament deviating the furthest possible from the Greek, from the, sorry, from the received text, is to all intents and purposes the Greek New Testament followed by the revision committee. This Greek text in the main follows the Vatican and Sinaiticus manuscripts. These actions reek of Jesuit underhandedness. Although Westcott and Hort were men of scholarship, they were not men of integrity. Their motives were the destruction of the authorized version and its preeminent position in England. They didn't desire to replace it with anything that they considered perfect or even better. They wanted to eliminate the King James Bible and replace it with something that was theirs. Again, hold on, do my thing here. They failed. Even though there are other versions out, which are descendants from those, they failed. They didn't eliminate God's word. And I'm thankful for that. Praise God, all glory belongs to Him. 
That was something.